First, you'll need to gather your supplies. You'll need a piece of faux leather or cork fabric and a cotton fabric to match, fleece batting, lining fabric, a ruler, a pair of scissors, a nine inch zipper. I'm using Sally Tomato faux metal zippers by the yard. These zippers have a metal look, but they're actually nylon, so they're safe to cut and sew through. A purse frame that is six inches, two three quarter inch rectangle rings, two three quarter inch swivel hooks, one stud button, one three quarter inch magnetic snap, a spool of polyester thread, a seam ripper, permanent glue such as E6000 or Loctite, large binder clips, wonder clips, and some chalk. All of these supplies can be found on our website, sallytomato.com, or you can request them at your local fabric shop. We also have kits available with all of the fabric and supplies you need to get started. Start by taking your faux leather, matching cotton fabric, batting, and lining. Cut out your pieces according to the pattern, which can be found on our website, sallytomato.com. First, we're going to work on making the zipper pocket. One notion that I like to use to make this step a little bit easier is a hot ruler. This ruler is safe to iron over, it won't melt, and you simply position it against the wrong side of your fabric and fold your fabric up to the half inch mark on the ruler. Then you can iron directly over the fold for a nice, crisp, accurate measurement. Next, you're gonna take zipper pocket A and your zipper with right sides face up and the zipper pull closed with the pull going towards the right, you're gonna sew the long edge of the zipper to the long edge of zipper pocket A with a quarter inch seam allowance. For this step, I highly recommend using a zipper foot or a narrow foot. Otherwise, you can just stop sewing and then position the zipper pull out of the way as you sew and then continue going along the end of the zipper. Next, press pocket A away from the zipper. Make sure that you keep the zipper tape flat. So now the zipper is along the top edge and pocket A should be wrong side up. Then you're gonna center the front bottom panel right side up over the pocket A piece, aligning the top edges. Make sure you move the zipper pull inside the indented section and you're gonna to top stitch pocket A in place along the indented section with an eighth inch seam allowance. If you find that your zipper foot or narrow foot is sticking, you could add a piece of scotch tape to the bottom of the foot to help it glide easier along the faux leather, or you could switch over to using a Teflon foot. Another trick is to put a layer of tissue paper in between the foot and your fabric and sew right over the tissue paper and then once you're done sewing, you can tear the tissue paper off. Next, with right sides face up, you're going to center the front bottom panel over the zipper pocket B and align the top edges. If you flip it over to the wrong side, you should double check that the bottom and the side edges of pocket B are also even with pocket A. You can use some sewing clips to hold the top edges together and you're gonna sew pocket B in place along the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, starting and stopping at your previous top stitching. Next, we're gonna sew the side seams of the zipper pocket. So to do that, you'll move the right side of the front bottom panel away, and you'll sew only the pocket pieces together along the right side edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then you'll repeat for the left side edge. Make sure you leave the bottom edge unsewn because we'll use this hole for turning the bag right side out later on. If you're using a lighter weight fabric, such as quilt weight cotton for your top panel, you'll want to add a layer of fleece to the back side. You can either use a fusible fleece or a sew-in, and then you can just sew it around the outer edges with the eighth inch seam allowance to attach the fleece batting to your top panel. If you're using a thicker, heavier weight fabric, such as canvas, you can skip adding the fleece batting altogether. With right sides together, align the long bottom edge of the front top panel along the top edge of the front bottom panel. Sew them together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Just be conscious of your zipper pull as you sew 
and make sure that it's out of the way. Press the top panel up away from the zipper with the seam towards the top panel. Top stitch the top panel with 1 8 inch seam. Fold the front in half and mark the center at the top edge and at the seam. Then mark 2 inches down from the top edge and 3 inches down from the seam. Start by taking your washer and center it over each mark. Use chalk to mark the slits of the washer. Then take your seam ripper and cut the slits you just marked. Take the female half of the magnetic snap and poke the prongs through at the 3 inch mark. Place the washer on the wrong side and bend the prongs outward. If you'd like, you can take a scrap of batting and fuse it to the wrong side of the snap to protect your fabric from being scratched. Then take the male half of the magnetic snap and install it the same way at the 2 inch mark. After the snap is installed, unzip the zipper to prepare the bag for turning later. Next we're going to work on making and attaching the back handle. Center and fuse your batting to the wrong side of the handle and each handle connector. With wrong sides together, fold each link side of the handle to the center. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch an eighth inch from the raw edges. You'll repeat for both of the handle connectors. Slide both rectangle rings over the end of the handle. With wrong sides together, fold the handle matching the short raw edges. You'll want to adjust the rectangle rings so there's one ring on each end of the handle and the raw ends meet about three quarters of an inch from one of the folded edges. Then you're going to top stitch a rectangle sewing an eighth inch from the side folded edges and about a half inch from the hardware. A zipper foot or a narrow foot will help you stitch close to the edge and the hardware. After sewing, make sure you turn over the handle to make sure you caught that join. Next, thread one handle connector through each rectangle ring. And with wrong sides together, you're going to fold the raw ends of each connector so they meet in the middle. Use some sewing clips to hold the layers together, or you could use some double-sided basting tape. Next, you're going to take your back panel and measure 6 inches down from the top edge. Then, with right sides up, you're going to center the top edge of the handle along that 6 inch mark. You'll top stitch the handle in place by sewing each connector 1 8 inch from the side edges and about a half inch from the hardware. You'll also sew a square on each inside end of the handle along your previous top stitching. Again, you can use some double-sided basting tape or even some paper tape to help hold the handle connectors and the handle in place as you sew. Now that our front and back panels are prepped, we're ready to assemble the bag. With right sides together, align all edges of the exterior pieces and sew them together along the sides and the bottom edge only. Then you'll also sew one inch in from each side edge along the top. Use 3 8 inch seam allowance for this step. To create the box bottom corners on each bottom corner of the main fabric, you'll place right sides together and match the side seam and the bottom seam. Flatten the corner to align the raw edges and sew together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Trim excess fabric from each corner to reduce bulk. Then you repeat the same steps to assemble the lining, but this time you'll use a half inch seam allowance. You'll want to trim some of the bulk from the corners as well, and then turn the lining right side out. With right sides together, put the lining inside the exterior and align the top edges and side seams. Then you're going to sew around the entire top edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Before turning, cut small slits or notches along the entire top edge that will help relax the fabric and keep the shape of the curve. 
Then you'll turn the bag right side out by pushing the exterior and lining through the bottom unsewn edge of the zipper pocket. Push the lining down into the exterior. Use your fingers to roll the top seam to make sure the top edge is tight and flat. Then you'll top stitch around the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Line up the folded edges of the zipper pocket and top stitch the bottom edge with the eighth inch seam allowance to close up that turning hole. Now that our bag is complete, we're ready to attach the purse frame. Apply a generous amount of permanent glue inside one channel of the purse frame from hinge to hinge. Then you're going to center and push the upper edge of the bag into the channel. If you'd like, you could use a flathead screwdriver to help you push the fabric up into the channel, but be careful to not scratch the purse frame. Use large binder clips or clothespins to hold the top edge of the bag in the frame while the glue dries. You'll want to allow the glue to dry for at least 24 hours before using your bag. Then you can repeat to glue the other side into the remaining channel. If you find that the fabric is a little loose inside the channel, you can add a few short strands of thick twine inside the channel. Otherwise, after the glue has dried, you can use a rubber coated pliers or a scrap of fleece and irregular pliers to clamp each of the channels tighter against the bag. Just be careful to not clamp too hard in one place or another because it could cause your purse frame to look dented. First, you're gonna join your crossbody strap pieces by placing the short ends right sides together perpendicular to each other, and you'll want the ends to overlap about a quarter of an inch. So a diagonal seam from corner to corner. I'm gonna use a Teflon foot to help sew through the faux leather so my machine doesn't stick to the faux leather. If you're finding that you're using a metal foot and the fabric is sticking to the bottom of the foot, you could also try adding a piece of tape to the bottom of the foot or adding a layer of tissue paper in between the foot and your fabric as you sew. Trim the excess seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. Then you'll press the seam open with your fingers. Top stitch each side of the seam with an eighth inch seam allowance. Next, you're gonna fold the strap in half lengthwise with wrong sides together and top stitch an eighth inch from each length side. Now we're gonna taper the ends of the strap. This step is optional, but it adds some extra detail to the strap. First, you're gonna measure three quarters of an inch in from each short end along the inside edge. Then you're gonna draw a diagonal line between each three quarter inch measurement and the opposite lower corner of the strap. Cut along each line to create tapered ends. Then top stitch an eighth inch from the tapered ends. What's nice about using cork fabric or faux leather is that it can be left raw edge, so we don't have to finish off these ends of our strap. Next, you're gonna thread one end of the strap through one swivel hook. Fold the end of the strap about an inch or an inch and a quarter to the underside and top stitch the strap to itself. From now on, remember that the side that has the raw edge folded against it will be considered the underside of the strap. Then you're gonna thread the opposite end of the strap through your other swivel hook with the hook against the top side of the strap. Slide the hook away from the end a bit to make room for installing the stud. Measure an inch and a quarter in from the end of the strap. Take a rotary punch and punch a hole that is no wider than the screw of the stud. If the fabric doesn't come out after punching, use a screwdriver or an awl to poke the rest of the fabric out. Then take your screw and poke it through from the top side to the underside. Screw the stud in place against the underside. Next, measure two inches away from the stud and mark in the center of the strap. Then measure two inch increments along the entire length of the strap. I'm just going to mark a few holes so you get the idea. Set your rotary punch to a hole size that is 1 8 inch in diameter and punch a hole at each mark. Then use the scissors to cut a quarter inch long slit next to each hole parallel to the length. Push the stud through any of the holes 
and adjust the length as needed by pushing the stud through a different hole. You'll continue the same process along the entire length of the strap. Once your strap is complete, you can attach the swivel hooks to each rectangle ring on the handle if you want to use your bag as a crossbody. You can find this pattern on sallytomato.com. Remember, all the supplies are available on our website or you can request them at your local fabric shop. Be sure to check out our handmade kits for making this project. I hope you enjoy your stylish new bag!